Hi, and welcome to another episode of Anniversary Edition. Today, we're going to be talking about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which celebrates its 50th anniversary this year. As always, we are going to spoil the film, so go away, watch it first, and then come back and have a little listen to what we've got to say. Uh, I'm Sophie, and I am here today with Adam. Hey, how's it going? And Tom. Hello. So, 1969, yeah. American Western film. Yeah, set the scene. Set, I'm setting the scene. Directed by uh, George Roy Hill and written by William Goldman. George Roy Hill is like such a good name for a guy to direct a cowboy movie, isn't it? It is It is quite good, yeah. Like the standoff I, I at George Roy Hill? It's good. <laughs> Um, I've written a little synopsis just to to give you an idea of what happens in case you don't know. Uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, along with his girlfriend Etta, flee to Bolivia following a string of train robberies to find respite from a group of American hitmen seeking justice. I guess, yeah. I mean, that that kind of sums up the plot. Yeah. But the film's not really about that. Hit- hitmen is not the right yeah, word. Yeah, I couldn't really figure out they're a, a group. The, they're a detective agency. Oh. The Pinkertons are um, a detective agency, and they're essentially, they still exist as Pinkertons, but they, they were essentially the prototype for the FBI. Because uh, they, oh, were really a, interesting. They, were, interesting. they were a cross-state. They, they basically, they, they were certified FBI as... FBI can't do that. Yes, they are. That's the I whole mean, point. I mean, they can cross the state. Yes, <laughs> that's the point but, of them. But they, okay. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But but the the thing is that the uh, the uh, the Pinkertons were a private hire detective agency that could operate in any state. Yes, because they're hired by the guy that runs yeah, the the train the trains. Yeah. Yes. Um. So top line kind of kind of thoughts. Tom, I'm going to come to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um. Top line thoughts are, now. I really like some of this, okay. and there are other bits that I'm not so bothered about. So okay. it's kind of like, um, I can understand why it has its place in film history. I can mm-hmm. understand the appeal of it. Mm-hmm. There are aspects of it that I think are a bit, oh, that's a bit of a shame, or that's a bit, eh. But there's yep. bits of it I think are, are, are really, really good. So it's a bit Great. kind of mixed for me. Okay. Adam, how about you? This is exciting because I think this might be the first time that we found a film that you like the most. Actually, no, maybe not because the gay divorcee really liked that one. Yeah. Uh, I get the sense that you really like this film. Uh, for me, this okay. is a film that's maybe not so much about the titular characters, but about the end of the Old West, right? That's what. Is that what this um, film is about? I, I, I mean, mean, to to an extent. The last yeah. two yes. great. Sort of a, li- a little bit bandits. I th- I think that the issue you have with it might be very similar to the issue that I kind of have with it. Yeah, and it's that it's that you have these two great characters. They're but, great characters, but the, so fun. But the the plot of the film goes nowhere. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like uh, if I think of this as a character study, then it's great. Yes, yes. But yeah. as an action adventure western. Not it's so there's, there's yeah, not there's, a lot of action. Yeah, nothing yeah. really. Yeah. Nothing happens. So my top line thoughts on it mm-hmm. was that it's a film that is. It's very strange. It is strange. It's yeah, really yeah. weird. You don't think of. I mean, I'd never seen Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Okay. It's the first time watching it right, a couple okay. of weeks ago, and it is so. I, I kind of had the idea that maybe it was the like the cowboy movie because it's so talked about it's a very very Mm. famous film yeah but it's not it's it's almost like a french film yeah in its sort of the way that it kind of puts you on the back foot yeah Mm -hmm. you have no idea what the next shot's going to be what the next scene's going to be yeah it lets you get to know these two great characters Mm. yeah both very fun characters Mm -hmm. with their own great quirks you've got butch cassidy who He's never shot a man before, <laughs> yeah. despite the fact he's like, you know, an yeah. aging cowboy. Yeah. Sundance Kid, greatest shooter in the West. Yeah. Yep. Six gun slinging, can't swim. Yeah. Uh, great characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it does nothing with them for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not a massive fan of the film? No. Okay. 
So I, I, I don't love this film. I'm, okay. I'm going to correct you. You said you had a great time with it when I asked you. I liked watching it because yeah. it reminded me of... It's the type of films that like my parents used to put on and it was kind of, you know, a classic Western mm. American film. Is it a classic Western? Well, see, there's the thing. I'm not sure that it is. I can't. I, I mean, it kind of is and it isn't. Well, so this is what I... That's what I was expecting when I watched mm. it because yeah, I've same. definitely seen bits of it when I was younger because I recognised yeah. the characters um, whether I had the attention span to actually sit and watch it all the way through so yeah. I guess officially the first time I watched this was last week um, because I can't say that I ever did see it all the way through when I was younger yeah. but I liked it because it was a throwback to that kind of for me nostalgic mm. viewing Yeah, um, there were bits of it that I really liked yes I think it's a shame that there wasn't as much going on as I expected there to be I was like where's the kind of you know the drawing of the guns and the yeah, like where's yeah. the I face know. off yeah. and this town ain't big enough for the both of us yes. yeah I think yeah. you're right when you say it's a throwback I think that's exactly what it is we're heading into the 70s mm-hmm. and this is sort of like the last gasp of of trying to resurrect the, the western the western yeah as cinema in Hollywood starts going into a sort of stranger mm-hmm. time. Yeah, there's a, there's there was a big kind of weird shift in Hollywood in the late 60s, early 70s. There's a great book called Easy Riders and Raging Bulls, which kind of covers that era yeah. of that transition. And like Easy Riders is a great example of it. Like There was just this kind of slightly new wave version of Hollywood, which was almost like Hollywood doing independent movies in, mm-hmm. a, in, a, in a kind of way. What I think about this is that... We've all often said on this podcast that if you don't want your movie to date, then it's got to be something that's period set. Yes. And quite often that that stops it from feeling clunky in a, mm-hmm. in a modern viewing experience. Yeah. What I think is really weird about this is that there are some movies and there are some movies that we're going to cover on the podcast that are so much of the 60s mm-hmm. and that six swinging 60s vibe mm-hmm. infuses them so much that it makes them what they are. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this is infused with that swinging 60s sensibility. But because it's a Western, it doesn't work. It's yeah. so weird. The sight of Paul Newman riding around on a bicycle, dressed as a cowboy yeah. in, in rural Wyoming, yeah. Riding a bicycle to raindrops keep falling on my mm-hmm. head yeah. will stay in my mind. It's burnt in. <laughs> it's one of the weirdest things I've it ever seen. It just shouldn't in a be film. in that film. No. It should be in like. It's hair. so jarring. You know, yeah. I when I watched that, I literally was like, oh, it's like an early 70s kind of yeah. hippie sort of flower pack. It's very like hazy yeah. and pretty. Mm. And it was like a romance. You know, I was kind of waiting for it to go in a completely different direction. I was in like, oh. It's a cowboy well, movie. Yeah. And, and, it's like, his, and it's his partner's girl. Yeah. yeah that's also a bit and weird. Then the and then the line she says. Like, yeah. free but, love. But the line she says after. Was when she's like, oh, you know, if you if we, if I'd met you first, do you think we'd be the ones that are together? Yeah. And you think mm, that's probably not the yeah. best question to be asking. Yeah. Um. So there's, I think there's loads going on, but you guys kind of mentioned earlier, like, is it actually a western? And according to the American Film Institute, it is the seventh greatest western of all time. Really? That's r- okay. <laughs> See, interesting. <laughs> on on the IMDb, it just says biography, crime, drama. Yep. Yeah, Doesn't which is probably western. a little bit more. It, I don't. I think it is a western. It has a great train robbery. It's, it does. It's yeah. got mm. a lot, a lot of the yeah. ideas of a western. They hang out in a saloon. Yeah, yeah. there's a bordello. Yeah, it's it's all the, you know. The prostitutes fall in love with them. It's all there for, I mean, a, for it, a western, apart from the man like the black hats. I guess the black hats are even there, yeah, even though they're got a white hat. The, yeah. Um, the I think the thing is that they were two of the most famous outlaws ever. Like yeah. Bush yeah. Cassidy, the Sundance Kid, Billy the Kid, yeah. like Pat Garrett. They were the they were the big names. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like to have this movie where it's not yeah. a western does feel very strange. You just expect more. I expected I expected yeah. so much more of all of that to, to yeah. make it more of a western in my head. Whereas when you read out the the description, then I mean, yeah, it's kind of it's a crime. It's kind of their last sort of yeah. It Journey, feels and like the just... last Western. Mm. Yeah, but as, I think as the it's last because... cowboys have to leave town. I think it's yeah. because of their story as well. You know, they the, the shootout at the end. You know, they they know you know they're gonna die, and mm. it's just oh, that ending was weird. It's kind it of is that. Weird. It's based on 
it, well, it's based on what they believe is the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're not sure. But they don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's very, it's an interesting film. Mm. Um, so I think we've all kind of said, I, I first saw this officially definitely last week, but like I said, I've seen bits of it. But Adam, you saw it for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I don't watch a lot of westerns, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. I avoid them. Okay. Don't like the genre or just... Um, no, not a huge fan of the genre. I think I think it's one of those things where there are some that are just I think it's, I think... fantastic and there are other, there's a lot that aren't. I find yeah. it very predictable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that... Uh, there's a lot of kind of like a toxic masculinity around the characters yeah. in westerns yeah, yeah it's a very different is. time mm -hmm. yeah it makes me slightly uncomfortable mm -hmm. yeah they just emanate rapey vibes every character <laughs> yeah. in a western uh so i'm ah westerns they sort of make me feel a bit creeped out and they're so predictable that's really interesting because mm. i wonder if that contributed to why you didn't like the gay divorcee so much because yeah. it's so of its time and they're mm. so rapey no the the characters are so kind of boxed in when you talk about like sort of toxic masculinity and characters have to or seem to have to sort of sit in their box they might have played around with the boundaries of it like yeah. you know we talked about ginger rogers and she was you know had a lot more gumption than mm. a lot of other girls and that's why he liked her yeah and so you get these characters that are kind of teasing the edges of the box but they are so boxed in and i i wonder if maybe that's why kind of you you don't like that like i think that's fair it's it's a fair thing to say that i don't like characters who um, and this is like a lot of old movies are like this where where like the men say would treat women as objects and yeah. not as people mm. with their own life like i can't like these characters mm -hmm. it I'll watch movies where these characters exist. Yeah. They're called villains. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. If you make a movie now and you watch it now, that they're, they're the guy that you hate. Yeah. Maybe maybe I'm just, you know, a bit too much the product of my society. And I wouldn't have lasted 10 minutes 100 years ago. Yeah. No, but it's just, it's what your expectations are, I think, isn't it? You know, it's it's how you kind of expect people to interact with each other and it's the way you expect them to behave and when they kind of tick all those stereotypical boxes it's predictable like you say it's kind of yeah. it's a bit boring it's not as exciting and and it's not it's not challenging and it's not empowering to watch every single person in these kind of movies are just biff tannen yeah yeah but then i think i mean it, it then becomes a thing of like what was what was accurate to that time period. Yeah, exactly because that it what that's how it was. You know, it was a brutal. It was period of this history. This was this was life. You know, in the wilderness. Mm. The, these were people who were dressed fancy, but they were scraping by, skin of their teeth. Mm -hmm. They, yeah. you know, not too far of a stone's throw from being like savage wild men. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, the kind of people who live out in the hills of Wyoming today. Yeah. I'd be interested, in, I'd be interested in to find out what types of Westerns you would get on with. Because mm. I think there probably are some. I thought The Magnificent Seven was meh. Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head which, which <laughs> other ones I've seen. All right. I have to... I have to it uh, was bleh. Bleh. <laughs> bleh. I, I mean, they do about. kind of... They do kind of merge into one in yeah. my head the ones that I've <laughs> I always feel like they're set in the same town <laughs> yes yeah. but you know they're very formulaic in that mm. way hell of a saloon in these towns though <laughs> but the thing is though when you take when you take the all of the stories that were forged by people making westerns mm -hmm. yeah and then you transpose those and you look at movies like uh, Blade Runner or uh, Star Wars mm -hmm. or you know they're all they've, they're all infused with that those Western tropes. Yeah, yeah for sure. absolutely. So it's sometimes like the stories that you get from Westerns are really great, really compelling. Mm -hmm. It's just the setting that you find off putting. Yeah, and the restriction of that, you yeah. know, because you can't have well, I mean, you can have effects, but you can't have you know 
mm. a spaceship coming in and right. making things really exciting. Well, you can if you make cowboys I mean, and aliens. But, yeah. oh, of course you can. Yeah, Sorry, you can. Oh, I've seen cowboys and aliens. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that didn't help. Um, but yeah, you are massively restricted. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. use a ton of dynamite. That's your effect. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. That's your You've got a truck of dynamite. Yeah. You've got some hats. But even you can with, make a western. Even yeah. with the characters, you can't play around too much because no. they had to be correct of the time and, yeah. and those stories and that's how people behaved mm-hmm. so yeah. you know you can't you don't have the freedom to kind of do whatever you want with these yeah. interesting and exciting characters yeah and I, it, for me I always forget that the Wild West occurred like in in, in in a time period that was concurrent with like you know obviously we're, we're in the 1900s mm-hmm. in this yeah. movie yeah which is way more recent than you think of than the, the Wild West. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, like, for the, uh, the Good, the Bad and the Ugly, one of the classic Westerns of the time, is set in the same time period as the American Civil War. Mm-hmm. And you kind of forget that those two things were happening yeah, at the same time. So, yeah, I, I always find, like, Western stuff... I mean, you think, like, yeah, I mean, you think about... Yeah, yeah. Butch Cass in Sundance Kid, uh, and then maybe you think 10 years later, and how close are you to the Prohibition right there? Oh, I mean, it's yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, exactly. It's, yeah. Prohibition era, mm-hmm. Al Capone, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and you think of those, isn't that those weird? movies? Yeah, yeah, it's like very some strange. like it hot is set only like ten years yeah, after, after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just mental. Tom, how about you? When was the first time that you saw this? Because I feel like you probably saw this before. Uh, yeah, I had seen it before, yeah. uh, but only within the last four or five years. Okay, like not, you know, right. Um, and I, my, I think the reason I watched it mm-hmm. was because of Bill Goldman or William Goldman, who wrote the script. Okay. He wrote The Princess Bride. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and he also wrote All the President's Men. Mm-hmm. Um, and a whole bunch of other yes. movies. He's, you know, he's one of the most legendary script writers mm-hmm. uh, to come out of Hollywood. Uh, mostly because he wrote uh, a book called Adventures in the Screen Trade, which kind of is incredibly revealing about what it's like within Hollywood in mm-hmm. that time period. Yeah. And it was about getting these movies made and what happened to his scripts. And so, I, you know, I've read those and I think I was just kind of like, I just picked up on this. Um, you know, he did uh, Marathon Man as well, Bridge Too Far, Princess Bride, uh, Chaplin. L- loads of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I, I, I've, I've read, uh, I've read some of his books. I've read some of his screenplays. So, I think that's how I ended up watching this was because it was like, oh, there's a there's a classic movie that he wrote that I've never written, yeah, uh, never read uh, or seen. And um, for me, I think the script is the thing that makes this movie. Yeah, there are some really really nice moments. You know, between characters, it's his it's his creation and imagination of those characters, mm. which is then brought to life by Redford and Newman. I yeah. think so. I think that it's the coupling of his script and their screen presence mm-hmm. and interaction with each other that is the saving grace that kind of makes me like that that allowed me to just kind of be entertained by it through, yeah. throughout. You know, I, and I kind of like yeah, I would have liked a bit more of a interesting plot but mm-hmm. i mean i guess he was going based on what he thought was the truth of what actually yeah. happened to them and that's the other thing when you are telling a story like this you are restricted by what happened yeah if you want it to be you know biographical yeah. as much as it can be yeah yeah so i kind of yeah i would have maybe if i had been bill goldman which i'm definitely not but maybe if i had been i would have picked a different part of their thing yeah Maybe the in the wild bunch. Perhaps. Interesting because I'm I'm getting a funny look yeah. from Adam. What? What's what's oh, this? Are we talking about Butch Cass and the Sundance Kid being too faithful to what they thought actually happened? As raindrops keep falling on my head, ha- plays as they but, cycle around a Vaseline smeared lens field. Yeah, but that, a that's, montage. That's, that, yeah, that <laughs> that's not like in the script. That's like that's something you know, that gets added and developed. We later. have to get them to Bolivia. Also, yeah. and also that is no excuse. No, it's not an excuse. Because it's... if you're like, oh, we have to send Butch Cassie and the Sundance Kid to Bolivia, that sucks. I guess we'll stop their character development. I don't think it's... it's I don't think... Maybe they learn Spanish. Oh, congratulations. That's some real character... 
No, also, I think it's just Im- also on top of all okay. of that, that is no excuse to make the villain zombies. No excuse. What? The villains have no personality, no names. They're just ceaseless. They do have unmoving. Name. Well, of course they have a name, but they're ceaseless, unmoving, unthinking, unmotivated. Well, they are motivated. They're motivated by money. By money, which you never. S- <laughs> Sure, in the same way that zombies are motivated by brains. Yeah, but I mean, they they are like they are uh, essentially like your Michael Myers, aren't they? But you've got to—they're zombies. Yeah, but you've got to be—you've got to be on the, the, you know, you've got a lot of charm with Butch and Sundance, and they make them. Goldman makes them very likable. Like yes. the whole point is that you're on their side. You want them to escape. Sure. You want them to get away. Yeah. yeah. And you know that's why they make the 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 Pinkertons like LaFors is a is a faceless like you never see him. You just know he wears a white hat, and he's just this ominous presence that's mm-hmm. coming after them because it's the fear of getting caught that he represents more than yeah. anything else, right? <laughs> Knowing Darth Vader's motivation and who he really was and all that didn't make him any less scary. And but, I, I, but this story I isn't about a villain. Bad. No. no, Star Wars isn't about Darth Vader. Oh, I mean, it is. What, what Star Wars did you see? <laughs> um, I, I guess, arguably, Revenge of the Sith was about Darth Vader. How am I... I feel like I'm failing to communicate this properly. <laughs> the villains of this piece aren't written. And that... It bothers I, you. I, 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 of course it bothers me. Okay. There, there's a reason why I think, generally speaking, zombie movies are lazy. I don't like zombie movies. I, I, generally. I think, I think we're, we're looking at it from the wrong point of view. But but yeah, th- I don't think of this. I like evil dead. That's kind of why the, I said but, like. But, but that zombie, that's 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 a greater thing. But I don't think of this as, as a movie about villains. This is a story about two people who were real. Who, and you're catching no the movie very with villains end that are written their... necessarily has to be about the villains. But but they're barely in it. Like it's but not. You're looking at it from the. It's about you know, the Rocky two... isn't about Apollo Creed. No, but if it's about two friends. This is the point I'm getting to, is that it's not about what happens. It's about them as yeah. characters, and it's about their interaction with each other. All the other stuff doesn't matter. Like, I think what we're, we're looking at this is, because we're thinking, oh, it's a Western three-act structure. This happens, that happens, this happens. And you want the bad guy. That, and you've got a bad guy. And, and we're thinking of it in that sort of terminology mm-hmm. and that kind of story. And it's not that at all. It's more just a portrait of who these men were. And it, like you said earlier, it's almost like more like a French film in that respect. So it's not, I don't think it's about plot because it doesn't really yeah. have one. It's just they're running away. And it do, that, yeah, that doesn't bug me because like you say, all it, all it is is just that that's why they need to leave. Yeah. And you get to the point in the movie, like I think you did and I did, we go, well, nothing's really happening yeah. that much. Why so, am I still watching this film? Because you're, you're interested in the interplay between them as people, mm-hmm. not what's happening to them. That's the that's the point. That, yeah, and that's kind of how I see the film. It's not about a villain and a bad guy, and a, yeah. because it's just not. It's about it's about two friends who are fleeing a country and who died. But I think that's also kind of slightly what makes it weird is because it's like you're not telling the story of what happened to these people, which is what you kind of expect going in. Yeah, you're it's just, just telling them. like this is what we imagine they were like, mm. and to all accounts. Butch Cassidy was very similar to how he was portrayed in mm. the movie, according to his sister, who's still alive yeah. when it was made. And don't go wrong, if I if I think of this and try and critique it as, oh, you know, this is a this is a the seventh greatest western of all time. Yeah. I'd argue that it's absolutely not. As a film on its own, as you said, Tom, like about two friends and an exploration of who they were as people, and that snapshot of the end of their journey. Yeah. It's it's that's that's what it is. It's not for me anyway. Watching it is not a western like adventure film. Yeah, I liked the film all the way up until the hold up in the brothel, bordello, whatever you want to call it. Before they leave, when yeah, they, for right. America. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All the way up until that point, 
I thought to myself, okay, so we've got an interesting story. We've got two well-drawn characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not denying that at all. Mm-hmm. Um, no, and, no, I know. And we're, we're pushing them yep. backs up against the wall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're in a town that's kind of 50-50, pretty hostile to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how are they going to get out of this? Mm. Okay. Uh, you've got the greatest gunman in the West and the greatest mind in the West. Yeah. How are they going to get out of this? And that's the film you wanted to see the rest of? Um, yeah. 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 I, you, I get that completely. Yeah. And they run. Yeah. And they run and they never stop running. Yeah. Yeah. And you talk about like the interplay between them, which yes, is interesting, but n- their, their relationships with each other does not develop once they end up in Bolivia. No, and uh, this is my thing. See, I think I at would, that point the film is terrible. I, 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 I like the bit where they're on the run, and I think the the moment the film starts to kind of flatten out and flatline a bit is when they get to the train station in Bolivia. I mm-hmm. like all the chase stuff. I like the humour that they have in the relentlessness of Lafour's and his. Pinkertons, yeah. Like I like, you know, I think it's it's played for comedy and they do it mm-hmm. really, really well. Like just that, who is this guy? And the, mm-hmm. the repetition of that, and the and obviously the famous, really famous uh, river jump scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I I really enjoyed all of that mm-hmm. because it was funny and it kind of you know it like you say it just shows them on the run. Yeah. Because. You know, they were. That's you know, that is what they did. They they ran away because they were they'd had enough. Um, because the only thing that was going to happen to them was that they were going to get killed because of what. That's what it was like in the West. They had no other option yeah. than to run. But, like you say, when it gets to Bolivia, it just becomes a bit like stagnant. Yeah. Because they didn't really do very much down there. They tried to go straight. It doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. I did quite like the fact that the the first time Butch ever kills somebody or shoots somebody is when he's actually got a legitimate job. Yeah. I thought that was kind <laughs> yeah. of like, that was a nice, yeah. I don't know how true that bit is, but yeah. I, that's that feels very kind of Goldman-esque to me that yeah. it's, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I think you're right. It does kind of just plateau because it's just, it's just nowhere to go from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Until the dark cloud eventually comes back over that town. Yeah. 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 And I, and I completely agree. It's almost like it's it's a film of two parts. Yeah. When they're kind of when they're on the run and you like you say like you're waiting for that exciting reaction to oh we're being chased and yeah. I think if that got made today maybe or if that got made in a different way you would have that and you mm. would and if you if you didn't use Butch Cast and Sundance Kid or you used the premise but took it in a different way yeah. you'd have a really great proper Western action movie. They would have A-teamed the hell out of that situation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and you yeah. would have had such a different film. Yeah. And it does, it gets boring, not boring, but it, it, it gets exhausting it gets to watch. <laughs> because yeah. nothing really happens. They're on that and they're bored. Yeah. And the, even the act, like, like the characters are bored. Yeah. Well, and she's bored. Like, you know, she leaves because she it's just yeah. like, nothing's going to happen here. We're just going to die eventually. Yeah. Mm. And she knows it, and and you know, and that's that's why I think probably the character of Etta leaves. But yeah, it's it's more challenging or more trying to watch once they mm. get to Bolivia because you're expecting something to happen and it just doesn't. Apart from right at the end, which you know is going to happen anyway, and it's not really a exciting thing. And it's almost like the Bolivia stuff is kind of too long. Mm. Of of sort of nothingness, uh, and I think like all of this stuff that we don't like is a product of it being made in the late sixties. Mm-hmm. It's it's like this. That's the sixties movie and like the French New Wave movie. At, like it's all of that stuff that they're they're using those that sort of you know approach to filmmaking. Mm. But because it's a western, it, that's where it falls down because mm-hmm. that's not what, how we're looking at it now. Because you know, to the people who watched it at the time. Like the audiences, yeah, that was probably, probably very zeitgeisty and very kind of like worked because it was it was something different, but something it, it was new, they, they you know. hit you with a lot of different things from a lot of different directions. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays we're used to cohesive narratives, mm-hmm. and we're like, what the hell was that? Yeah, why? I mean, yep. but the thing is, though, there are movies that are made now that aren't that don't necessarily have cohesive narratives, that, and that are made in a more out off the wall, interesting way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and we go and see them as contemporary audiences. And we're like, that's really cool. That's great. That's that's really interesting. 
50 years down the line, people are going to be going, that's kind of weird because it's, it's, you know, you're tapping into something that is current and present. Yeah. And when it, and it, and sometimes that doesn't mishmash well Mm -hmm. later on down the line. Yeah. I probably. Yeah. Well, Adam, given that you didn't love the film. Yeah, that's fair. What's your (laughs) kind of favorite moment? My favourite moment, it, yeah, is when Paul Newman puts on an old woman's voice <laughs> to uh, <laughs> access the access the the train coach yes. of the train yeah. with the uh, safe. I think the train robberies are the the, the best, yeah. some of the best scenes in that. Yeah, those so movies. do I. In fact, when so they do two, the second one they use too much dynamite mm-hmm. and they blow that thing to smithereens. And I had to rewind that and watch that twice because the sh- the shot. I watched that twice. Because there are two stuntmen standing way too close yeah. to that explosion, <laughs> like like they are, they're literally like ten feet away from it, and it just like how they didn't get like obliterated by splinters, I do not know. I mean, they probably did. Mm-hmm. I mean, knowing well, how yeah, but I mean, like that must have been they made films back yeah. then. They probably did. But also, I was thinking when Robert Redford turns to Paul Newman and says, "You think we use enough dynamite there, Butch?" <laughs> yeah, There's no way that Paul Newman heard a word he said. <laughs> His ears have been ringing for the next week. Yeah. Yeah, is that is that what you think, Thomas? In terms of kind of favourite moments, it's the train robberies. I mean, it's, they're, the, they're the most Western part of it. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And I, I yeah. do, I, I did really enjoy that those, those moments. I think mm-hmm. the interplay between Butch and Sundance is great, but yeah. also the guy on the train who's just like he knows what's going to happen. I love yeah. his little character. I There's think nothing he can do about you it. No, I, I'd rather no one rob my train than you, Butch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and he's, he's just got so much. He has a, he has respect for them. Uh-huh. Yeah, but he's gonna do his job. Yep. Um, and you know, by the second time, they're just like he just knows where to hide, and like you know, yeah. there's all that kind of stuff. So I, I kind of like, I, I, I like that. I like the 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 river jump scene. Yeah. Um, when Paul Newman beats the guy who uh, tries yes. to take over his game. Oh yes, like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Wanna yeah. go over the rules? There are no rules. Kicks in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That yeah. guy is um, it, the character character name is Harvey Logan, who's also based on a real guy, but it's played by Ted Cassidy, who. Was more famously Lurch in the Adams family. Seriously? Oh, okay. Yeah. Any relation to the original Birch? <laughs> oh, do you know what? I don't know, but Who probably knows? not. Oh, I can only hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'd have to say that's that the train robbery is my mm. my favourite. Yep. Section as well, and I, I it's because they're funny to watch. Yeah. You know, they're not just oh we're going to blow stuff up. It's mm. like there's there's good dialogue and mm. there's good performances and good reactions, and they're just fun to watch that's time you see Butch Cassidy like using his legendary wit mm. yeah. yeah to get around a problem mm-hmm. yeah one of my other problems with this film is you Butch Cassidy is supposed to be a mastermind and the Sundance Kid is supposed to be the greatest gunslinger yeah. mm-hmm. you never other than in the weird in the opening yeah, that, scene yeah. you never see the Sundance Kid being a great shooter no, apart no. In uh, Bolivia, d- when he has to. I was going to say when um, they do the or, the uh, job interview. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, but that's, it's like yeah. one scene. Isn't but it? yeah, it's a job it's interview. Just, like, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so I, I know what you mean. It, you never see I him would, in action. I would have liked to have seen the Sundance Kid do something. Yeah. yeah, you know, maybe stand up a little bit, shoot three people from the Pinkerton. Yeah, like group. That's not the right word. Posse agency. <laughs> agency. Um, you know, do something, yeah. something yeah. impressive. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that that all might be a bit of a a bit of a hangover with like the Hayes Code stuff, because he, yeah, they rob banks and stuff. The only time like you really see them kill people is is in Bolivia when they're being hired to do that. Yeah. yeah. And it's a legitimate protection mm-hmm. job, yeah. not not a, a heist. So I kind of feel like if he had done that, he would have had to pay for it in like he he then Maybe, can't yeah. he then can't be a hero. But you can do it. You can do it in the way that like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cartoon did it. Yeah. Like I'm going <laughs> to shoot this tree that's holding up this boulder that's yeah. going to roll up and cut off the pass. Yeah. Never in the audience can be like, "Wow, that yeah, was a no, real yeah. crack shot." Mm-hmm. Likewise, you could have shown Butch being smarter. Yeah, right. He was clever like a fox in this film, not clever like a person. Yeah, I I just like <laughs> I feel like. 
all of that sort of stuff that you're talking about would have happened before this film started in yes. their history together. It would have. Which again, yeah, perhaps, you'd like yeah. to see. You kind of want to see Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid the early years. Yeah. That's, that's kind like of the film that I think... how they got their legend. Yeah, mm. and I think that's a film you want to see as well. I think yeah. that's yeah. the film that you... But instead we get the want. film that is the end of the Cowboys yeah. and the yeah. legends who have yeah. to go out to... Yeah, and it is kind of, it's kind of sad it. in that way. Like, you know, that... that... It's melancholy. Yeah, mm. it is. But it is a melancholy film. Here's, you know, we're talking about, and we all agree that when it gets to Bolivia, mm. the it really is an elephant dart to the ass of this movie. Yeah. I feel like they may as well have just done that, you know, had the film end with them getting on the train. Yeah, I okay. guess, but yeah. I still, I think, I think because, because... You could have done so much more around that town and then be like, that's it, we're done. Yeah. We're but done. The, we're bowing the, out. The, the, the they Bolivian... get on the train, train pulls away, credits roll. But the Bolivian shootout, the final scene of that movie, is one it's, of the most famous things about famous their story. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of have to include that. That's where it ends. That's where their story it just sucks. Al- allegedly, allegedly end- ends, ended. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess the other things we can talk about, this is a good looking film still. Oh, yeah. Isn't it though? It's a really good looking film. Mm. I was going to say, what's what's good about this? Yeah, is it it does look great. It holds up so well yeah. that you know much better than films made much later mm-hmm. than it. This looks as good as an Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think that is one of the things that is great about it. Like as a film, it looks good. Yeah. And and I do really like the the dialogue, um, as well. So you you saying that. Uh, if you think about it, uh, there was only 12 years between this movie and the first Indiana really? Jones movie. Really? Shut up. Okay. So, you know. It 12 probably years? Follows. Oh, my goodness. It wow. seems like such a different era. Doesn't it? Does, yeah, yeah, it really yeah. does. It seems like it feels a bit, very different. But then, how, how funny is this that we're talking about that when we're talking about the difference between Butch Cassidy and Al Capone? Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, Just, you yeah. know 10, 12 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's funny how a decade can really change perceptions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. About and I, I think that's, I think that's like an exponential thing. Think about today in two thousand nine. Is it not still two thousand nine? You know. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It seems weird that there are certain things like there are certain things that that. I guess it's to do with. I tell you what, it's to, it's to do with revolutions. Yeah. Because you know, industrial revolution. That's mm-hmm. when that's when things are really kicking off and things are changing really really fast, yeah. and you know technological revolution. That's you know th- there's a lot that's different now than there was ten years ago. Yeah, but absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, think about like YouTube and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Paul Newman and yeah, Rob I was gonna Redford, say we we've kind of gorgeous man, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> Good God. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm more I'm more a Robert Redford. Than a Paul Newman. Oh, it's Paul Newman all the way watching that. Paul Newman all the way. Yeah. He's just such like a proto Brad Pitt. Yeah. Brad Pitt. Yeah. I yeah. see that. It's crazy. I mean, speaking of them, favorite characters. We Sun haven't Dance. really kind of talked. Really? Sundance for me. It was Butch Cassidy for me. Uh, Butch was. I always felt like watching it. Like, how was Butch ended up an outlaw? He, he doesn't have that killer instinct that that Sundance does. He doesn't, but no. I feel like he was the sort of the guy. He's a guy that has like the gift of the gab. He's a guy yeah. that yeah. can he he can hustle people, and that was what he did. He he kind of he got in the hustle, and and it was just like that. That was that came easier to than hit to him because let's face it, in the Wild West, in like Wyoming or wherever, mm-hmm. whatever job you do, that's a hard life. Right, if you're yes. a rancher, if you're a farmer, absolutely, you know, yeah. whatever yeah. Linens, you're doing, that is a hard living. Yeah, and if you've got the yeah. gift of the gab and you can hustle people and make your life easier, that's what you're going to do. Absolutely. Sure. But if he was born in New York, he'd be a millionaire, quite possibly. <laughs> but he, he, like, he tried. He, he did. Um, he, he was like did ranching and, um, that kind of stuff. Mm. So like he. He had legitimate jobs, yeah, uh, and and he actually had ranches at some point, and he did that kind of stuff, and he, he just kind of slightly sort of fell into it, and it just became easier and easier, yeah, and, and that kind of makes sense. Then the people around him are the sort of people 
that are going to rob banks, that are going to shoot people. Yeah. And if he's got them to do his dirty work... And he can just sort of sit and, and, like, and as you say, hustle. Yeah, and but he can make their their work easier mm-hmm. using his brains. Then yeah. it's, it's, it's a perfect match, and that's why yeah. he's the leader. And, and it makes sense as to why he's never been the one that's pulled the trigger. Exactly, Which yeah. is what, you know, what he says yeah. in the film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how about you, Tom? Who's your favourite character? I mean... It's about them as a as a pair, as a duo, yeah. yeah. And and I think that sort of a coin toss, I, isn't it? Really, yeah. yeah. And, and I I just kind of like I feel like both of them are so intriguing as personalities mm. and so intriguing as, and then Newman and Redford are so charismatic as both of those. Like the, just them playing off each other just is just perfect. Yeah. What I want to stress here is that you know, we're talking about who each other's favorite characters are. There are no other characters in this film. No, as a place he, in theory I mean, is a human yeah. being. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is true. Almost devoid of wants and needs. Yeah, you don't really yeah. I mean have that much of an investment in it. Because this her. film is entirely just a two char- only two characters in this yeah. film are written. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why like I say, it's a character study about their yeah. relationship and that's that's yeah. fundamentally what it is. And yeah. uh, mm. so I don't think you can really you, you can't really put a cigarette paper between them, if you know what I mean. It's just yeah. it's, it's just so close. Yeah, well one without the other would be yeah. boring to watch. Exactly, so, yeah. You know. I think I wanted. I think I expected that. This is a problem with expectations versus you know what you actually get. Because mm. I was expecting this to be an action movie. Yeah. yeah, that's what I think it is. I think if you if you, like for example if it was uh, if it's called Butch Cassidy and Le Sundance Kid, you probably would have gone in <laughs> with with a completely different <laughs> Le Butch. Yeah. You would have gone in with a completely different mindset, and Absolutely. you probably would have enjoyed Le it. Du maybe, maybe not. Uh, raindrops keep falling on my head because that is just hideously jarring, no matter yeah. what. What, it, it really is. It's like you a separate it. film's just been yeah. cut into it. Like, oops, that wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah it's like another one of these uh, Elvis Presley movies. Yeah, you know. So interesting on this on the on the back lot slash stage next door. Mm-hmm. They were filming Hello Dolly. Uh, I think they just got a bit and, inspired and by it. <laughs> the you know the bit where they because the, Butch and Sundance go to New York to get on a boat to go to Bolivia, right? Yeah. which yes. it doesn't really get. Covered it, which had a place in the script, and they were just like, "Oh, we're going to use the Hello Dolly sets because they are perfect time period okay. and and uh, location." Mm-hmm. Um, and then they weren't allowed to, uh, but they mm. snuck on, took some photos, and made a montage. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why it's like that? And that's why it's like that. Yeah. Monta- I'd completely forgotten about that. Yeah. yeah, which again feels a bit weird. Yeah, but, you yeah. Know, you know, Definitely. Um, sometimes when I write notes when I watch a film, it's because the film gets just too good. Right. Like uh, maybe I started watching Jurassic Park yeah. and I start writing notes and then yeah. at a certain you point I put the in. notebook down. Yeah. Maybe my last two notes sort of not even watching the handwriting gets really bad. This yeah. is so good. <laughs> but I stopped taking notes. Butch Cash and the Sundance Kid. Um, I stopped writing notes once the Pinkston Agency showed up. Right, because they're kind of stopped being things to talk about. Mm. Yeah, and I didn't write take notes about the photo montage, which I right, also yeah. thought, are they ending the film here? Maybe they're ending yeah. the film here. Yeah, because could be a happy a ending. Photo mm. montage. Yeah, yeah. So weird. No, it's just simply that the deal they had in place to do, to use the set fell through. That's pretty Fair shocking. Fair enough. Yeah, pretty shocking. Um, so does it still hold up? We've said it looks good still. You, we all have issues with it as a Western. It's about managing your expectations. Yeah. Mm. Well, we've talked about this before because I think there's been a couple of films where I've expected to see a certain thing because I've not seen yeah. quite a lot of these films. And then we watched it and I'm like, oh, that's, I didn't like it. But then I, it's because I was expecting something yeah. so different. Um, and I think that's probably the issue with mm. this. For, for all of us, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'd go so far as to say, I think that is, uh, I think that's been a massive factor in it, and mm. I think particularly with your your view. In yeah. Them. But by, I would also argue that that whole it is a product of the '60s, and that doesn't meld. Like the whole raindrop mm-hmm. sequence, regardless of, you know, even if it did have that wham bam plot, and mm. and then something like that was still in it, you you you'd, be, you'd find it just as jarring, and, mm-hmm. it, and it wouldn't work. Yeah. So, like. I think even if you managed your expectations, it's still a bit weird. Like a it's bit like when you watch Spider Man three and, yeah. and it's got the Tobey <laughs> Maguire dance sequence yes, yes, going yeah, down the street. Yeah. It's just like yeah. that. Yeah, you're just like well, what? In, in fact, Who, what were they thinking? Yeah, I mean, raindrops get falling on my head in Spider Man two. 
is a yeah. sequence. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Put that out there. That is very interesting. That, maybe we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. No, maybe. maybe. Um. So yeah, th- those are kind of I think our our issues. Mm. But it looks good. I wouldn't yeah. ever. I wouldn't suggest someone go and watch this if they want to see a western, though. No, 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 no. Uh, there you go. I think it's you have to be having a specific conversation about. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I really like the idea of cowboys in the Wild West, but I really wish I got to knew like really got to know them. You know, <laughs> all these westerns <laughs> with their action sequences. I really just want to get much. into their psyche. Yeah. Or oh, you should like, watch Butch Cassidy and yes. the Sundance Kid if you don't like action yeah. and do like drawn out character mm-hmm. studies yeah pretty yeah. much there you go fair. yeah and th- you know there's a sprinkling of action in there but there it's is. just not I, I think what makes it worse is there is a sprinkling of action and you're like I want more of that oh, yeah. God, yeah yeah you're so like I want, there's just I want those more. little bits on the train and, that, and you're just action. like oh no I, do, I, do, I want to see more I just of that, want please. more more, yeah. more explosions more, more, more shoot out yeah. more face off yeah I feel like Sundance fires more bullets at inanimate objects. He definitely <laughs> fires more bullets at inanimate objects than he ever fires at people. <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything else to add about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? I don't think so. I think I we are. I think that's a wrap. Let's go over my notes. Oh, double checking. Uh, <laughs> no, I think a lot of my notes were just saying, "Wow, this still looks and sounds really good." Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and it does. But yeah, 1969. Yeah, I maybe mean, I'm watching it and thinking it must be older than that. Well, again, I think expectation because yeah. I think you're watching a western, you think, oh, this is going to be made. Yeah, yeah, in the 30s, the 30s, 40s, and it's not. Yeah, which is have probably... you seen any spaghetti westerns? The Clint Eastwood ones, like, uh, like... have I seen a Clint Eastwood? I'm sure like... I've seen the Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Okay, that's... have I? Well, I bet I I'd be willing to bet you haven't cuz you'd know if you had cuz that's like crazy long and not yeah. what you think. That's another one that's not quite the mm-hmm. western you think it is. Is any western the western I think it is? That's y- the question. Yes. Um <laughs> for uh, a fistful of dollars and a few dollars oh, more. Yes. Okay. Those those to me are kind of like they're they're quintessential westerns. So even like The Searchers, which is another like famous famous western. Isn't quite that. a western. It's John Wayne. You've seen a fistful of dollars, yeah. Sophie, and you haven't seen Bill and Ted's Excellent. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> got a got a weird film education. You really do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. And yeah. on that note, um, we'll we'll wrap up. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, next week we are going to be talking about what was what we're we talking about. <gasps> Indiana Jones. Oh my god! Oh, Wait, uh, which one? And the Last Crusade. Not just Indiana Jones in general, because we no, could do that too. I mean, we could totally do that too. But no, this Last is Last Crusade. Last Crusade. Yes. So tune in next week uh, for some more action. Super exciting! Actual action. Some actual, <laughs> actual action, and one of the best vehicular action scenes ever recorded on film. Ooh, wow! Interesting. I have to I'm, tune I'm, in to find out which one that was. Big fan of airships. Was. <laughs> it's not about airships <laughs> so thank you very much and goodbye bye bye this podcast was recorded in the Upbeat studio in Soho for studio inquiries drop us an email on studio at upbeatproductions.com you can also find us on Twitter head to at Upbeat Prod to see what we're up to and at Upbeat underscore ENTS for our film coverage and entertainment news 